Hello folks, this is Hitman Von Doom doing a, I guess a kind of a Spider-Man haul, but first I want to show this off. This is uh, the Marvel Legends that I bought for like 15 bucks. Not bad. And it was a Phoenix, Jean Grey. So I, was really, I got this off eBay. It was packaged and everything complete. And, you know, I was really happy that I got this. This is actually one of the I think uh, this is what, one of the ones that I was looking for for a little bit, and I can't tell you how many times that I've, you know, I've lost a bit on eBay because of it, and, you know, I, I could go out and buy it for like 50 bucks if I wanted to, but, you know, I, I wanted to get it for the right price because I wasn't willing to spend 50 bucks, and I got it for 15, so I was happy, and, you know, pretty cool stuff, Jane Grey there, really happy, Phoenix, and just for poops and giggles, look at the back. I look at the back and it's like, her intelligence is only a 2, her strength is a 1, her speed is a 1, her energy projection is a 3, and her fighting skill is a 2. And I just laugh because it's supposed to be the Phoenix and her power levels are so low. But anyway, I just get a chuckle out of that. So, yeah, Phoenix, my little action figure that I got there. Uh, I'll probably have to uh, leave it in the, in the box, so I'm actually a little disappointed that it's in the box because now I don't want to take it out because otherwise it would be, you know, I would have it on my television stand next to my Hope Summers action figure and Magneto action figure, but oh well. Back is incomplete. So anyway, this is going to be a Spider-Man one, and these are some stories of Spider-Man that I've always wanted to read, but i finally gotten around to picking up and reading. And before I do that, I just want to say that, you know, I mean, I've been wanting to make a comic video for a little a while, but here's the thing, um, I had a family member stay over, a younger family member, spending like an entire month over here, uh, you know, at my house, you know, with me an entire month, and I just really haven't because of that, I really didn't get around to doing any, any comic book videos at all. Because, you know, he was around. And I was planning on doing one, like, Sunday. But the Sunday was the time that my family member left. And when he left, he took, like, 20 comic books of mine. He let, Yeah, my mom, my mother picked him up. And took him back home, and he lives, I live in the city of Chicago, he lives in the Rockford, and he took about 20 comic books, you know, with, without asking, folks, without asking, or telling me, hey, I'm going to take these comics to read, which, you know, if you, if you, you know what I mean, and if he wanted to take them, and if he, if he would ask, hey, can I take this to read, I'll, when we come back, you know, they, they come back, when they, when I come back over here, I'm going to, you know, I'll bring them back when I come back for a visit or something like that, you know, then I would I wouldn't have really had been a problem, but you know he didn't ask, and not only that too, but he was been how was the right word? He's been like taking some of my comic books and just like when he was here and hiding them in order to keep them, like and I mean like you know my Uncanny X Men run, my X Men Dark Phoenix saga run, you know, and you know I wouldn't have a problem with it if he was just gonna read them and then you know read them if he asked me, hey, can I read this? Sure, you know, it's a comic book. It's meant to be read and enjoyed, you know. So I wouldn't have a problem, or I wouldn't even have a problem if he took it, read it, and put it back. But he was, you know, taking them and hiding them with the intention to keep them. And then he took pretty much my entire like twenty comics, and the, the comics, I mean, the comics that he took were there was a Messi then my complete X Men run of the Messiah Complex and Second Coming, which I love, and he took all of that and just. Left and not only that too, but he took my Hope Summers action figures that I have posted up on my television too. Like, yeah. So needless to say, folks, when I came home from work on Sunday, you know, I was ready to do a comic book video, and then when I saw what was missing, I was, I was very angry, and you know, and I mean, Incredible Hawk angry. So I wasn't really in the mood to do a comic book video because it would either. Well, I pretty much would have the vocabulary with the hawk if I would do did a comic video on that Sunday like I was planning on doing. But yeah, I was I was pretty peeved. So anyway, that out of the way. And this is Web of Spider Man number thirty one. And this is Craven the story of Craven's last hunt. 
Yes. I got finally this is this one is one of the ones that I've been reading and I've been hearing good things. So I always you know, I finally got around to picking some uh, picking them up and reading them. Oh, no, no webcam or don't. And so yeah, Craven's like and in this issue Oh my all I gotta say is Craven is insane. I mean what and just throughout the entire saga, I'm just like, what is the hell is wrong with you, Craven? Oh my, oh my god, I mean, he's insane, just completely insane in this, in this. I mean, he, I mean, in this issue, he shoots Spider-Man. He doesn't shoot him with a bullet, he shoots him with a tranquilizer and buries him, and, man, it, he was like eating spiders, and, man, he's insane. So this was a solid issue, 31. Amazing Spider-Man 293. This is, um, <clears throat> the second part to the Craven's Last Hudden saga. And in this one, how do I put this? Mary Jane's worried about Spider-Man because he's been, it's Peter because he's been gone, buried, you know, in extended sleep, as I would call it. And Craven, he actually puts on the Spider-Man costume and starts going around. Because it, it wasn't enough to finally, you know, he beats him. He needs to prove that Craven needs to prove that he's superior, superior to Spider-Man. So he dresses up like him and fights crime in a brutal fashion. And again, all I have to say is, Craven, what the hell is wrong with you? Oh God, insane, folks. Now this one, Peter Parker's Protect Spider-Man 131. I got it from Midtown, like a few of these from Midtown, and well, in this one. He goes after Vermin. Vermin was pretty much, you know, going up and eating people. He's like a gigantic oversized rat, pretty much. Not like Master Splinter who fights crime and he's a ninja, but him. You know, and so Craven, his logic is that Spider-Man needed Captain America's help in order to defeat Vermin. And so, in his crazy logic, he, he feels that, um, you know, if he couldn't defeat Vermin, Spider-Man can defeat Vermin by himself, and he needed Captain America's help, then, and if I can, and then he's like, okay, but if he can't do that, if I defeat him by myself, single-handedly, then I'll be superior to Spider-Man, and I'll finally have proven myself and restored my honor, you know, crazy stuff like that, and then, and he goes after Vermin, and that's what I gotta say again, it's Craven. what the hell is wrong with you? Ugh, man. And this one. Web of Spider-Man. Part 4. And of course, Craven's still going on an insanity-driven vendetta to prove himself better than Spider-Man. He's going after Vermin. He's fighting crime. And finally, Spider-Man, at the end of the issue, I, it's either, was it this one or the other one? He sticks his hand out, like Undertaker style, from the grave. And he's about ready to get his revenge. And this one, Spider-Man 294, and I got this off my comic book shop. And folks, I was very disappointed because you know it was advertised as like in fine condition, but then I, you know, I opened it up and on the cover it had like writing on it, you know. And <clears throat> needless to say, I was not happy about that because you know, you know, I hate. One of my pet peeves in comic books is writing. I mean, I just hate when it's writing on it, like someone writes in pen. Because I just feel it takes away from... Well, one, it takes away... If it's on the cover, it takes away from the cover, the artwork on the cover. And two, it's just very distracting. So I was really disappointed. But anyway, this issue, Spider-Man gets called, comes from his grave and comes for Craven. He lets Mary Jane know he's alive. Because he's been out of action for two weeks, disappeared. And pretty much... He goes after Craven and, you know, lays on, lays, you know, lays into him, punches him, and, but Craven, you know, he, according to Craven, he has nothing to prove. He's like, go ahead, hit me all you want. I have nothing to prove. I, I proved nothing superior to you. And so he doesn't fight back, and he ends up, you know, like, you know, in order to just to prove that he's even superior to him, he releases Vermin, and uh, Vermin attacks Spider-Man, and Vermin actually beats Spider-Man. And he was like, okay, and then, you know, he did that on purpose, so he would tell Spice. He did it on purpose to prove that, yeah, I beat Vermin by myself. You couldn't even beat him. And then he lets Vermin go. He's like, your point's proven. Go away. And he actually saved Spider-Man. And at the end of this, 
Well, in the end of this, um, you know, he comes to the realization that Spider-Man, that, you know, he, he has, like, something that's driving him, and he comes to realize that he isn't, like, this mystical figure. He's just a man, and he's a good guy. He's a man, a good man. And in the end, well, I'm going to show it because... In the end, he promises never to hunt again, and, well, here's what happens in the end. Look at that shotgun. Oh, what's he doing with the shotgun? Oh, wait a minute, he's pointing it in his mouth. Look at this hand, and bam! He kills himself. Craven shoots himself in the head with a shotgun, and he kills himself. Oh. Un unbelievable, folks. And, oh, God, I mean. And again, Craven, what is wrong with you? Ugh. And this is the final part to it. And after Craven has killed himself, this is pretty much Spider Man goes and stops the vermin in the, in the sunlight. It's a, it's a little anticlimactic way to end it, because I feel that this should have been the conclusion. But that is it's still pretty good. And in addition to that, Craven, like, clear Spider-Man's name. He was dressing as Spider-Man, brutalizing criminal. He even killed one. And in this one, he actually gives a confession that, no, he shows photos that I'm the one who dressed as Spider-Man. Shows the picture of him in his grave and stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much what happened. And so that, and so that was Craven's last hunt that I read. And it was a, it's a pretty solid read. And the one thing you know you need to know when you when you, if you ever you know if anyone picks this up is that um it's not really a, a story about Spider Man. I mean it's that you know of course that's you know Peter Parker spectacular Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man. It says Web of Spider Man. You know it might have his his name on a title and it might be his title, but it's not it's not really a story about Spider Man. It's it this this saga. It's really a story about Craven the Hunter. It's told from Craven's pers it's it's pretty much mainly told from Craven's narration, his his per perspective. It, it's a story about Craven. Spider Man is just like a secondary character in this. Craven's the main character, and that's the one thing you got to wrap your head around when you if you, if you decide to read this. It's a very good read, but it's a story about Craven, not Spider Man. And so yeah, that was one of the ones I picked up. And second one I picked up was. Spider-Man Reign, another one that I've been meaning to read, but I just haven't gotten around to it until I finally picked it up. And so, Spider-Man Reign, and pretty much, how do I put this? This is pretty much The Dark Knight starring Spider-Man. Well, The Dark Knight Returns starring Spider-Man. It's, it's no secret. I mean, if you read this, it, it takes a lot of things from The Dark Knight Returns and Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. I mean, you just you know, the, the from the the news from the, you know having those panels with those newscasters to pretty much just theme the theme of it and everything just you know about a down and out hero hero who who left the business you know who left the you know he left the crime fighting business who's down and out and he, now they're living in like some sort of totalitarian society and you know, just the themes it's the same and in this one. You find out that Spider-Man is just like this old, withered, beaten man. You know, that he, he really has nothing to fight for. He gave up being Spider-Man. And in the end, you find out that John, J. J. John Jameson sold the bugle. And you find he comes back and he comes back and gold Spider-Man out of retirement. And Spider-Man comes and actually rest, well, punches him in the face and he rescues him in his black outfit. But he, he makes a return. And it's such a totalitarian society that, you know, they they pretty much shoot at him and stuff like that. So that's what this is about. And I also got Spider-Man Reign number two. And of course, spider you know, he makes his comeback and everything, but... Well, the Sinister is sick. An aging Electro, Sandman, you know... Everyone except that doctor, but Spider-Man, you know, he's doing his heroics, you know, and the, nobody likes it, he's doing heroics. Like, well, except the underground people. J. Jonah Jameson is, like, leading the rebellion. He's leading this rebellion because soon, you know, the mayor wants to put this web over the, an, an, an electronic web over the city to prevent any crime from getting in and any crime from getting out. And he, he's, he's leading this rebellion, Spider-Man fighting crime, he's back to fighting crime and everything. 
you know, he's still this, again, he's still like this weird, defeated old man. And, you know, we find out that, you know, Mary Jane died and, you know, he blamed himself for that. So he, once Mary Jane died, he just was completely defeated. And again, un, and pretty much very similar to like the Dark Knight Returns, that Batman pretty much gave up being Batman when Jason Todd died. He gave up being Spider-Man essentially when Mary Jane died. And pretty much he gets covers the truth right there. He gets his ass pwned by the Sinister Six. And issue Spider-Man Reign number three. I kid you not, folks. Dr. Octopus is corpse. And I mean, I literally mean his corpse takes them, drags them, and throws them into the cough, into a coffin. I mean, and, it, and it's not his, his corpse, because Dr. Octopus is dead, but his arms, the, the mechanical arms, as you know, if you watch them like Spider-Man 2, they're alive. And so the, when he made his return, they, they kind of awakened, and they went right after Spider-Man, pulled him and threw him in his coffin. And in this, in this issue, you found out how Mary Jane died, and how tragic it is, is that um, Mary Jane died because... Um, she died of cancer, and it was because Spider-Man, when he got bit by the radioactive spider, he was radioactive. His blood became radioactive. He became radioactive, kind of. And after all the, you know, intercourse and, the, I guess, intimacy between them, and the long to a marriage, she was slowly, he was slowly, unintentionally killing her and irradiating her with radioact with his radioactivity. And you find out at the end that, um... He felt guilty because not only did he do, not only was she dying of cancer, but he actually went, when she was on her deathbed, he went to fight crime, and he left her, and when he came back, she she had already died. She had already died, and he was, and you know, the bed was already cleaned and everything, and he felt so guilty that he missed her last moment. And then in this issue, he, he kind of manages that the, her corpse is talking to her, him, and, and the corpse pretty much says that, you know, he that she she didn't she wasn't saying it she was saying to go to go that her final word thing was to when he was hearing this, to going out to fight crime because he heard the police sign was to go get him tiger and that pretty much gives him like a burst of energy and it turns out that when he got thrown to the coffin he buried his original blue and red spider-man suit and he pretty much punches through the coffin and said spider-man suit i'm ready to take on the world and in the meantime, we have the rebellion rising, and you have an interesting plot with this little girl, which comes into play in the final issue, Spider-Man Reign number four, the last one, and he makes his triumphant return to blue and red. And anyway, I was telling you about this little girl. She's kind of helping the resistance, and it turns out that she's actually the daughter of the Sandman. That you know, they start. He he finally has enough, and she stands up. And the reason Sandman realized that he's it's her daughter is that she he, she turns to stone, and they start shooting at her, and it's just really hard. It's just a really heartbreaking scene because they start shooting at her, and he's telling them that oh my god, stop, and they won't stop. And then finally, when they stop, she's pretty much in pieces, you know, because she turns to stone, but it's exactly metal like cloth is, so it could break. And, you know, he's over here cradling his daughter in his arm. And he's like, you know, I can't believe I never even knew her name. She had my eyes. And he's like, and he's trying to help her. He's like, okay, just concentrate. Peace back together. You know, it's easy. And then guess when he think that, you know, she's getting peace together and everything. He looks down at her and he realizes that she isn't getting peace back together. That she died. And that her hand is no longer stone. It turned back like, and it's kind of hinted that she turned back to a human form and she died. Really heartbreaking scene there. And that's when the salmon finally changes sides. And anyway, in Spider-Man comes and he, he confronts the mayor. And ironically, the person behind everything was the Venom symbiote. The Venom symbiote blamed Spider-Man for bringing him to Earth and then rejecting him and leaving him on that land to, you know, to pretty much to just to waste away and die. And it turns out that this whole web, this whole um, web system, electronic system enclosing the city to keep time in and out. It turns out that um, that um, it was just nothing more than a trap. That the Venom symbiote was going to planning and unleashing a bunch of, I guess, mini symbiotes to just devour all the citizens. And you know, he was pretty much essentially doing this to spite Spider-Man to try to lure him out. But of course, Spider-Man ends up taking them everybody down one by one. He takes down Craven. He takes down the Vulture. He takes down Electro. 
you know, he, he's not effing around. He takes them down. And then, he, like a true hero, he finally climbs, leads all those monsters away from everybody. And the odds of Spider-Man beating like 20, 30 of these Venom, Venom symbiote monsters were, is astronomical. And he pretty much is getting his butt handed to him until the Sandman comes and he gives him, he gives him like a detonator because the mayor, all the Sinister Six, the mayor gave him like a detonator, a device that was going to explode them all. And when they were going to explode them all, you know, the Sandman gave Spider-Man his, his detonator that oh, go ahead, explode him. You know what to do. I mean, he lost his daughter. It's time to kind of redeem himself. And so Spider-Man presses the detonator, destroys everything, and seemingly dies. But in the end, you find out that he visits the grave and he's like, Mary Jane, I miss you. And he's like, but I, and I'll see you soon, but I have my responsibility. And that was Spider-Man Reign. Again, it's very similar to The Dark Knight Returns. Which, you know, some people could say, oh, that's a bad thing. It's a cheap ripoff. But take it for what it is. It's a very, even though you, we've seen it in The Dark Knight Returns with Frank Miller, it's still a very solid story. And, I mean, just look at this cover right away. I mean, I love this cover. I mean, you know, him hugging the tombstone of Mary Jane is just, it's just amazing. It's a lovely cover. I love it. And so, anyway, that's, that's kind of what I picked up thus far. Some, like, some old Spider-Man storylines that I've been wanting to read Craven's Last Hunt. Spider-Man Reign, and of course, my action figure, oh, action figure, but so that's what I picked up, I actually have some other things that I'm, that I have, that I'm probably going to show soon, but I'm waiting, I, I think I'm waiting for one or two more books to come in before I show what I've been picking up and accumulating, so anyway, Tim and Randoon, thanks for watching folks.